that's so important for the future, having the girls back on, on the Broad Tour, you know, makes it more exciting. It is a great story to have Olympians join the World Pro Tour. Like night racing in House and Hill is the best. The men and women are competing for equal prize money and on the exact same course. Back at the top step of the podium for two races in a row now. Kuba Dorme! Stoked to be back here at Steamboat, one of the best venues. I'm back in the number one spot, Michael Ankeny. Welcome back to Colorado and the World Pro Ski Tour. And this is the Moose Barrows Trophy presented by DNA Vibe. I'm John Franklin, CEO of the World Pro Ski Tour, and I'm here on the second day of our races at Steamboat Springs, Colorado, House and Hill. Today, we've got the Alpine Bank Junior Challenge. This is where our racers, both men and women, come out and give coaching tips to junior racers from the Steamboat Winter Sports Club. It's a great day. We do this every year, sponsored by Alpine Bank, and a great chance for these ski racers to mentor young kids in how to get ahead in the world of ski racing. Following that, we've got one more dual super solemn among the men. Yesterday, Michael Ankeny came back and won. It's his first victory since two seasons ago at Eldora. So he's super pumped up to race again, going for two in a row. But Robert Cohn's got the target on Michael's back and is looking forward to try and take the top step away from Michael Ankeny tonight. and welcome to the World Pro Ski Tour presented by Rocket Mortgage. Today we are at House and Hill in sunny Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Hopefully you're gonna have a great time here in Steamboat. If you get tired of watching ski races, which I don't think you will, we've got hot springs and hopefully you'll have a good time. I've been to Steamboat many times actually going to school in Denver. We came up here a little bit for training and I actually had two national championships here and still have championships and we've won both of the championships in Steamboat. So Steamboat's a good place for me and for the Denver team, for sure. Howlson for me is a great hill in, in panel slum. Um, yeah, I love it. And naturally, like I tend to be better at speed events in the other world of ski racing that involves downhill and super G, so. Uh, having jumps and higher speed and like more stakes is just kind of better for me. So the house in Hill is now the third time here. Last year was not so good. I mean, with all the snow came in the day before the race. Everybody who knows me, you know, like that I don't really like snow. Yeah, it's a great hill. I like it. It's steep. It's not so easy, you know, to ski. You have to go with tactics. You can't just go all the way full speed from top to the finish. That doesn't work here. I did the Murphy Roberts Memorial Classic here uh, in 2017, kind of my last year racing on the World Cup and qualified myself for the 2018 Olympics. A little bit of a love-hate relationship as far as the Pro Tour is concerned. It's a, it's a bit of a nemesis. It's, it's a challenging hill and I haven't found the success here that I'd hoped to have. You've probably got the best skiing in the world in the Rocky Mountains. And uh, what you want is sunshine and powder snow. Basically, what you've got out here. Overall, it's one of the favorite hills um, for the athletes, the staff, and I mean, you can't beat the weather today, so it's gonna be a great day. I'm 
My mom almost maybe likes this format of racing more than I do. She's a huge fan. My mom, she actually did the pro tour back when there was a women's tour a long time ago, I think. I don't know, in the 90s or 80s? She was doing this too, so she loves it. She loves that there's a women's tour again. She likes to support it. Pro racing is something different, you know? Uh, I mean, everybody has a chance. So you never know who is going to win, finally. But I just talked to many of the racers at the Olympics too, and I said, like, hey, you have to come to the Pro Tour. That's, that's something different. That's real ski racing. I'm not sure if they already realized how how high the level is uh, at dual slaloms. It would be absolutely fun to have some guys back here from World Cup too. I mean, they have all a chance. The jumps are super fun. That's not something that we're really used to in sort of tech events. I don't know if it's dangerous, but definitely a lot more technical. You gotta ski well and you gotta be a little bit more precise. Maybe some of these speed skiers are a little bit more used to like being in the air, but uh, it's a nice different, different touch. The way I see Pro Ski Tour right now is just an awesome chance to go have fun with great guys and, and make some money if I can and, and just enjoy myself skiing. I mean, last night, I love speed racing and downhill, so I can't say it's more fun than that, but last night was probably one of the more fun nights I've had in a long time of skiing. Super fun. I definitely want to keep doing this for a while. I'm not, my future for skiing and being like a graduating senior at CU with skiing is a little shaky, but I know that I want to keep doing this for a while. Yeah. Barbie really wants this dream house, and Barbie found out about it from Rocket Homes. She did? Well, it's a super competitive market. Everyone wants to buy the dream house. Better off for Betty, cash off for Carl. Oh no. Don't worry, she has a verified approval that lets sellers know she's backed by Rocket Mortgage. So Barbie wins. But we need a house. You could buy Castle Gray School. <laughs> Find and finance your dream house with Rocket Homes and Rocket Mortgage. Here is a place situated off the map of ordinary, a place that is independent, free-spirited, and intimate in scale. A place that since its first lift was installed over 60 years ago has strived to stay true to its roots while growing better rather than bigger. This vision for the future has helped make us the first ski resort in the world to earn B Corp certification. It's a symbol of where we're headed and what we stand for. We hope you will join us. For more than half a century, Seiko has been supporting athletes in their efforts to be the best. Now, we want to bring this reliable technology to anyone striving for a goal. Because we understand, a split second can change everything. Keep going forward, prospects. We're back for the second day of racing in Steamboat Springs, Colorado at House and Hill. Yesterday we had a very exciting day. Two races, Rocket Mortgage Women's Cup and a men's race. And back at the top step of the podium for two races in a row now. Kuma in Norway! I was lucky to have the time on my side today, but it's it's been really fun, and I can't believe I just won the second one in a row. Galena, what else? Second, second place. place. I've done a few dual races here and there, but it's definitely the most real-time feedback you get in this sport of whether or not you're skiing fast enough. In fourth, fourth place, place, Caitlin Hurst. I started getting my starts nailed pretty early on in the race. So I think that was kind of helping me have a slight advantage on whoever I was going up against. I definitely think that helped and that gave me some confidence. Back in the number one spot, Michael Ankeny. Great job tonight, buddy. Hey, Michael. Yeah, thank you. I felt good on my skis straight from the get-go, uh, right from the training runs. 
feeling out kind of the softer snow on top, but then when we got down to the firmer snow and started figuring out the course a little bit, learning its little nuances where I could go and where I had to give it a little more respect. Michael impressed me yesterday. Clearly he came away with the victory, but it was his skiing. I, I saw that he'd come off each jump and really dive into the next turns and section and just get organized immediately off each jump. Just trying to figure out the Colorado snow here. Yesterday it was rippling out and there was a couple of ridges in the track and I didn't really like uh, my consistency on each turn. And so today I'm trying to just run cleaner turn from top to bottom. This is probably the most technical hill on the World Pro Ski Tour circuit. So there were some crashes. I was really happy with my skiing up until I crashed. You know, when I crashed, I think that I was really close to getting Simon. And if I would beat him in that run before I crashed, then I would have gone to the semifinals. I mean, we were right next to each other. Did I have a successful day? You tell me. We're all out here competing and the girls are out here trying to win 10 grand as well as me. So it's a fun dynamic and it's good to have them here and hopefully in the future we have more and it's a, a full two races per tour stop for both the men and women everywhere we go. And I think that'd be great. This is the Moose Barrows Trophy presented by DNA Vibe. My name is Jim Barrows. We're standing at Howlson Hill where I grew up to graduate and to go to the University of Colorado to ski. Moose is from Steamboat and he used Howlson Hill as his proving grounds before getting catapulted into the mix of the best ski racers in the world. Then in 1971, Moose shifted his attention to the Pro Ski Tour. We're here for the World Pro Skiing Tour addition to the Steamboat Springs Winter Carnival, the longest event in the skiing world in the United States. We have this short hill where we can learn every aspect of skiing from slalom to downhill and across country. And it's a great place for kids and people to grow in the skiing world. Every time Moose and I get in a dual course, and we say, all right, Moose, we have to have an agreement. We're gonna ski in slow motion, okay? Just go fast from the last gate to the finish line. And then we get part way down, and oh, Moose is ahead of me. Oh, I gotta show him. And then we start going. It's so much fun, this dual racing. In the old days, we had to have a carnival. Everybody came in, it was the first sunshine, and they had a big party. The ski joring, it was the cowboys with the fastest horses trying to get the young skiers that could hang on the tightest and go the fastest, and then you would win your ski drawing event. Okay, John, we need to make an executive decision, and you make all of them, so we're thinking about going up the Moose Barrows chairlift. Sure. Let's go up the chairlift. <laughs> take the easy way down, you know? The one that goes this way, I heard. You don't want to plant your pole like this. In the Olympics, you might have to make two or three turns every second. You don't have time to do that. All you have time to do is this. And you can turn as fast as you can flick your wrists if your hands are out for balance. Wow. <laughs> Billy's doing the course. did a little uh, course inspection, chalk talk, racer analysis of the course for some of our partners and sponsors of the race. And of course, our host was Billy Kidd, 1964 Olympic silver medalist, 1970 World Pro Champion, and 1970 FIS World Champion. 
Billy has not been over a pro jump in a couple of years, but uh, he came through the bottom gate, went right over the pro jump, and it's a really good course inspection for the whole gang. One, two, three. There's only one name on Moose Barrow's trophy so far, and it's Rob Cohn's name, and it's on there twice. Beautiful day for skiing. Got the disco van, <clears throat> so hopefully I can bring my dance moves out on the ski hill again tonight. Gonna be a good one. The snow's looking good, weather's looking good. I'm feeling pretty refreshed after my bike last night, and a good night's sleep, so here we go. Yeehaw. <laughs> Last year, in the final heat of the final race, Michael Ankeny had half a second advantage over defending tour champion Robert Cohn, and then his binding ripped out of his ski, abruptly ending his quest once again to be on top of that podium. Yeah, Ankeny and I have gone head to head a ton uh, the past couple years. He has really taken some good shape after each jump and given it respect so that he can nail those sections in between. I'm trying to do the same thing, and that's what I want to do to take him down shot at it today. I need to break this curse of not making it out of the round of 16. We have some really good guys here and some guys that haven't been on the tour much and got to take a few less runs than some of the other guys and hopefully I have a bit more energy today and use that to my advantage. Feeling good today, you know. I felt really good in the course yesterday. I like how they uh, set up the turns. Pretty close against Ankeny in the round of eight. Uh, that's all I got off the head, and then I just uh, had a little mistake. Today I'm looking to rectify that and be a little better, be a little more solid and faster and get to that finish line. My name's Tanner Perkins. I am racing completely independently. I go to school at the University of Utah, but I'm not with any coaches or teams right now. I grew up in Crested Butte and skied with the Aspen Ski Team. I love jumps and also the money. The money was a big thing. It was like sweet, and I also wanted to go see if I could ski with these guys. And like Michael and Rob Cohen, they're all like quite a bit older than me, but those are names that I've known for a long time, being a younger guy. So I just like, oh, just come see if I can ski with them and stay with them, and yeah, it was super fun. I'm smiling from year to year. It's been two years since I've won. It's nice that Michael got a little redemption from last year. It's gonna be a, another great day, good snow. Good weather, and I just gotta step it up, do what I need to do. What we did yesterday is it took about probably all of qualifying to get down to the hard snow. So now that we're down to the hard snow, we decided last night to just go ahead and slip the course. We did a lot of course work on it, but with shovels and with brakes. There was a nice kind of groove. It was a little off camber, so we smoothed that out. Now that the sun's been hitting it for a little bit this morning, we did some high speed slips through it, and the track is, is pretty darn good, and we're still down at the hard stuff. We try on these steeper hills to have the takeoff and the landing pitch match somewhat so that they don't slap down on their skis. And they were slapping a little bit yesterday, so we kind of shaved the lip off of the jump a little bit so they don't get kicked in the air so much and travel so far down the hill. Do you want to move any gates? No? Uh, I don't. I mean, if we move them, you're just going to have your... You know what I would do is that gate out and the panel. Outer panel? Yeah. So that's what that's <laughs> Both of them or just that one? Both of them. But well, why? So you can have some nice shape into the section, but that's yeah. just me being like anal. So between the second and third jump, we gotta move everything up a little bit. Okay, because the two gates before the last jump are like 12 and a half meters. These athletes, I mean they're the ones skiing the hill. So we always talk to the athletes, the athlete board, 
um, in between, you know, qualifying and races, um, after races, uh, just to get their input, because they're the ones that are actually on the course, so I don't see why we shouldn't use their input. And I'd say 99% of the time, I agree with them and we do it, and they don't mind rolling up their sleeves and getting some work done. The boots have to be cold, and they have all the tension of the plastic. And hopefully it works for the race. Doing some start gate testing. The Pro Tour uses horse gates, which open up from the center, 900 pound magnets that keep them closed. So when the, the lights count down to the start, gates open up, racers explode out. If the racer tries to time it and hits the gate, it's called a barge. And it, worse than anything, it throws them off because it knocks them back while the other racer takes off. Start is very important in pro racing because the courses are short and steep, so you want to get as much speed out of the start as you possibly can. The course is holding out pretty good. There's good ice, so that's holding together for now. There seemed like there were some ruts for the guys yesterday, but 19 degrees this morning, so the snow temp's probably 12, 15, something in that range, and uh, that should hold up good for us. really wants this dream house and Barbie found out about it from Rocket Homes. She did? Well, it's a super competitive market. Everyone wants to buy the dream house. Better offer Betty, cash offer Carl. Oh no. Don't worry, she has a verified approval that lets sellers know she's backed by Rocket Mortgage. So Barbie wins. But we need a house. You could buy Castle Gray School. <laughs> find and finance your dream house with Rocket Homes and Rocket Mortgage. This is the town ski area, and it started in 1913 when a Norwegian ski champion came to America. Carl Howelson was the star of the Barnum and Bailey Circus. And then Carl Howelson came to Steamboat, built the jumps, taught all the local kids how to ski, and that's why we've had 100 Olympians come out of Steamboat. Pro Alpine ski jumping. Winter Carnival Steamboat Spring, here we go. What a beautiful day, Sam. It doesn't get any better than that. It's almost uh, glorious out, isn't That's it? That's right. Nice jump, Rob. Nice wide and dance. Good job. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for being here. We've had world champion jumpers here that set the world record for jumping on this very hill. He's in motion. I see him on the hill. He needs to get a hold of this one. I think he might have. Today it's no style. Get yourself as far down the hill as you can. Back in the day, you had to do a little technique in the air. Well, we had to depend on judges if they liked your, your huck or your talk. We just wanted to go for distance. The best way to do is lay on them and go fast. I love it. Off the end of that Looks jump. Looks like a pretty good jump there. Oh, I yeah. like that. So it's kind of good. 
Surefoot course preview. As you can see there on the right, there's the lights that count down from five. It's really important to time it so you're coming out right when it opens. And then up top here, we've got some hard right foot fall away turns that you really need to set up coming into this jump. You need to go off with a flat ski absorb and get quickly on the edge to make sure that you're on top of it on this steep pitch. Second jump, not too big, but then it stacks up here. So you need to bring good shape off that jump. Now you're building speed on each one. Absorb a small little jump, grab the tuck, and reach for those lines. It was a wild ride. That was your sure foot course preview. We're coming at you with your sure foot course preview. You've got these barn door style gates. Really important to get that good start. Coming out, steep top of the course here, top of Hallison Hill, real turny. You get these grooves from yesterday's ruts, and then you fly up this first jump. You gotta land, hit these ruts, but you gotta stay ahead of it. It starts to tighten up a bit. Hit the second jump, another big air. Really important to get on that new ski. You got these grooves that you're doing with them. You gotta put your foot in them. Just quick little slap over the bottom, straight in, across the line. That was your sure foot course preview. Another beaut and steamboat. Got the body energized, skis prepped, mind ready. Feeling good? Ready to rock. Today's the day. Tuesday, baby. I'm glad they left the course up. The snow will be a better, harder. Yeah, excited. We had fun last night, but uh, now we gotta have fun today. Red course ready, blue course ready, racers ready. How'd you feel about yesterday? Well, yesterday was all right. Trying to figure out that soft Colorado snow. Across the line goes Robert Jones first. Racers ready! It was a little harder today, which is good. We're down to the, the dish from yesterday, so there's no none of the soft snow to push off. So it's aggressive early, and you gotta you gotta be on it. Red course ready. Ready. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick to my plan is to keep the core tight so I don't get uh, in the back seat and uh, hopefully it works out by the end. Well, we got some work to do today. Finally started to get a couple of good turns together in the last run I had. Um, hopefully I can keep rolling that into some more turns today. It looks about the same. It smells a little better, so that should be good. These courses don't feel very good on my body. Hitting like 100 foot jumps in Aspen. Skiing out of my mind hard. Racers ready! Two runs on this course, I'm like, oh, I don't think I can ski ever again. I gotta get myself a little more shape at the top of the turn. I'm 
trying to get myself into a spot where I don't have to race some of the faster guys off the bat in the in the race race. When it's hot out, your skis get pretty warm, and then there's all this ice buildup from the temperature differential on the edges. And I want to actually use my edge instead of it just going on the ice. So it requires a little bit of baby before all each run. But at night when it's colder, you don't really get that ice buildup, which is nice. Woo, it's getting slushy here. Conditions. Ah. Is that edge feeling all right? Yeah, just taking some ice off of it, takes on there a little bit. Should be good. Racer ready! First one was a little uh, wild. Just gonna calm that down this run and try to move up a little bit in ranking. Racer's ready! If the slope gets harder, you can speed faster, you can use more angles and different styles of technique. Ready. Ready. Definitely a big improvement. Some micro adjustments. This little lighter stance helped me out. And uh, I think I did pretty good, so looking forward to tonight. The end of the turn, when you're, you're like trying to juice the tail, just like, oh geez, yeah. You can release it, but then just go straight and beat. Versus like hooking and going deep. Skiing is pretty, just make it as simple as possible, you know? Just make sure our uh, edges don't have a lot of ice on them because then you don't have any edges when you ski, you know? I think a lot of ski racing is mindset. It's just like more of a feeling than it is technical preparation a lot of the time. Race is ready! How was the party last night? The party was good. The Cheetos crew was awesome as usual. Maybe they were a little too awesome. We're, um, we're getting going here. It's the uh, tortoise, not the hare right now, for sure. <laughs>
These guys have a quick little course, so they need to really make the most out of the start. Be out right as soon as they can. like this, right? And you have to fight it back the opposite direction. Nice tight race right here. Grabbing the bullet to the finish. Nice job, ladies. It's just exciting to see these young kids ripping it up. I mean, I'm thinking back to when I was that age and there's no way I'm piping turns like that. So it just makes me excited to watch skiing in the future. having our first world championships in Taos coming up in a month and a half. I've never been to Taos. I'm excited to see a new mountain. Taos, you know, it's, I was already super interested <laughs> last year. That's the race of the races, you know. Everything has to be on point. There's a lot on the line. Bucket list spot. I mean, Taos is one that I've heard a lot about. So that's definitely, and you know, skiing New Mexico, I've never been that far south to ski. So I think it'd be really cool to, to ski down there and I'm excited to see the landscape. And so that's exciting. Taos is gonna be a showdown. I think all of us are, are getting a lot of good mileage in the Pro Tour style this year. We're getting some good turns and some good hills and everyone's figuring out the start, figuring out how to ski this kind of radius. We're gonna see the same cream rising to the top in some of those final rounds, hopefully and uh, you need to ski fast. I'm definitely gonna go to Taos, and I'm gonna practice my start a little bit more and uh, do a little bit of panel skiing, and then hopefully I'll, uh, I'll make you win there. Taos is gonna be interesting because we've got GS, so that brings a new element to the game, and so just gotta keep training, get strong, maybe a little more endurance than here. Going to Taos for the big finals, that's the race of the races. Hopefully a lot of races are coming so that they can see that pro racing is something different. So yeah, super excited for it and can't wait. You get uh, the DNA vibe, you vibing out. I just plugged mine in right before I came out here. It's pretty nice. Hey, hey everybody, it's me, Simon, here back at Hausen Hill. We just made it back from the Olympics from Beijing. It was a crazy hard trip. Next yeah. to me, Mr. Barry from DNA Wipe. Hardly an opportunity to recover, right? So to help that along, so you can go straight for the Olympics to professional skiing with the World Pro Ski Tour, DNA Vibe gets to step in and help out. So really the way this works, inside here are over 30 emitters, near infrared, red light, micro vibration, and also magnetic waves. That combination of four modalities stimulates the body's natural healing process. It improves blood flow, it improves oxygenation in the areas that you're struggling with pain or recovery. Uh, it also stimulates the fabrication of ATP to provide energy to the cells. And then the micro vibration not only provides a soothing relief, but it also stimulates the flow of non-vascular fluids. So when you put those four modes together, which is unique to the DNA by product, it really helps accelerate the recovery and the soothing effects. And it's made to wrap around the knee, around the elbow, the ankle, the neck, one of my favorite places, the lower back, put it on, turn it on, feel better. We have a guarantee. If somebody buys one, tries it, and it doesn't help them, we give them their money back, no questions asked. I am so looking forward to this race tonight. This is going to be incredibly exciting. This is the Moose Barrows Trophy presented by DNA Vibe. We're gonna find out if Mr. Ankeny can reign supreme again. Red course ready! Red course ready! Red course ready! Red down the beach goes out in front. That big advantage. He charges towards the first bump. Definitely gonna be some sore backs out there, some tired legs. We'll see who has the stamina to make it the final round. Compared to last night, the course kind of buffed out a little bit. Even though it's a very similar track, it's something I like more to push off of. I really like to ride a smooth arc through all the turns. Red course ready! Red course ready! Hey, hey, hey. 
Norshak is pretty solid too. Cone gets the jump at the top as it hits to the first pitch. Looks pretty easy to match if you get a different camera angle. Look at the Norshak. Right there with number one in the tour. Looks the pressure on Cone. Hits the Norshak out front with a bobble now. Cone still trails the Norshak in the middle part of the course. Not by much. My plan's gonna be to keep the aggression at the same level, but it's not a gimme by any means, so I can't take too much off, and he's a good skier, so just trying to keep that intensity the same and maybe a little bit more tactically smart. Armor Launder, Maple. Richard Finney! Go, Wiley gets a good, strong start over the, the veteran, three years on tour with us now, second in the overall standing, and another upset in the making here. Here we are again, you know, second day of racing. Pretty tough. At the moment, I'm feeling good, much better than today morning. Yeah, confident, you know, and skiing smart, skiing fast, not making mistakes. I think that's the key today, and let's keep it up. Well, looks like Yankee may be a little bit of a jump over the blue course side as he heads for the first jump to Yankee with that edge. I'm committing to no cross blocking. I didn't put shin guards on. I don't see the advantage. I'm just committing to my own technique and style. Just as I predicted, Cole gets the jump. Morshak tries to do it. He makes a mistake, comes up against the board. Oh, he's a turn and going down. Tough break. Out goes the Morshak. On goes Cole into the semifinals. Some guys are doing a double cross block for these panel gates. I think I do it a little more often than others. I'm with the shorter guys, so it helps me get inside their tracks and gives me a much cleaner line. But once we get into these big dishes, and we're running the same courses last night, so that dish is set. Close here. Drop it down the pitch. Pass the really gonna have to pull on the seat at the top. Here's Norman Chef heads to the first bump with about a half a gate lead coming down. Two for Tuesday. I want the prize. Marshall and Ankeny. Ankeny on the red course side. Trying to make up that point two. I'm pretty worried about this guy because I've seen his ski. And it's good. He's the Norway guy. He's used to the darkness, so. <laughs> it's all about him. It's cold. Looks like he's got a little bit of a jump by Norman Seth as he works his way down the top of the course. It's cold by about his two flanks and touches down off the top. As more and more of us run down it, there's some ruts and tracks that get established, so I'm just trying to find the best way to ski it. Oh, strong start. One step, not that quick. Looks like a little more intense. He lost a couple of starts, and it's out in front of the cone. Thomas has been a little bit quicker before that top up. I'm also bringing in the, the attacking spirit. That's the Norwegian national team has. Everyone's got the same kind of plan, stick to your own run. I'm trying to do that. I do that every run, and uh, I'm just working on my own course off the bottom. Jump. They drop down the pitch. Ankeny right there with him. Into the first jump they go. Cameron and Ankeny about to get even, baby. Ankeny touching down a little bit ahead. I'm on strong like ball. I've got a different kind of jet lag, maybe induced by Cheetos a little bit. What do you learn from yesterday that you bring into this matchup? Drinking more energy drinks. <laughs> Simone Camelander, the Olympian, drops down the pitch with the advantage of the tenth over the first run. And he's out in front right now, but here comes Wiley Maple, trying to keep it real. Oh, getting a little bit twisted. Oh, oh Wiley gets back on the tails of those one six. Oh, he's holding his knee. That's not good. Not good. He grabbed his knee there. Just want to say, Wiley, you're strong as hell, man. Get better. You can do this. Look for training. Look for training. Make training. Go. Looks like Tom on the knee. He got a little bit of a jump. He dropped down the pitch. Ankeny right there with him. Into the first jump they go. Tom on an ankle. He's about to get even. Michael, you must be on a high. Definitely not low. Feeling good. Doing my own game. Why so serious? Pretty confident, you know. Most clean king. Try to find out a good line and king smart. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, this matchup is definitely going to be the hardest one I've had today, this far. It looks like he, he got a good cross-block technique. 
so hopefully I'll be able to ski around faster than he goes straight through them, but we'll see, we'll see. Jamal gets strong start yep. to move towards side, leads it behind as he drops down the pitch. Here comes the Viking, trying to pull alongside. Oh, he's in trouble, going sideways, but he's still in it. Mom, Dad, I love you. Thanks for making this possible. It's been a blessing all the way. My little bro, Freddy, when he sees this, he's gonna be proud. This makes me happy too. Door opening for this time, Lander. Down the pitch. Dormant sets right there with him as they head to the first bump. It's gonna be a tough race for sure. Late night again. And the only way to, to win this is skiing fast and making no mistakes. Coming down to the last couple rounds here, it's straight business. You can joke around, but at the end of the day, gate closes, you're locked in. I'm just trying to make good, consistent arcs, and these ruts are kind of building, and Michael and I are both trying to figure it out. Down the pitch they go, out the front, easy, a little bit of the jump to Ankeny. Oh, it's starting to get twisted up there at the first bump. It's anybody's race. Cuts it down, back to Ankeny looks like he's starting to pull away in the blue course side. Has an edge over Cohen's, he did last time. Oh, Ankeny still on front. Cohen's struggling to keep up with Ankeny. Into the bottom, jump to it. Ankeny's strong, out in front of Cohen. <laughs> he's just trying to ride the pony and be a joker, but I'm trying to be Captain America straight to business. Victory. Strength. Composure. Victory. Pretty simple, this ski racing thing. All right, welcome to the podium ceremony here at Halston Hill. What an incredible weekend of racing it's been. The Alpine Bank Cup Kids Race, that was super exciting. Here with John Franklin, the CEO of the World Pro Ski Tour. John, what a night, another great one. Kevin, it was another great night. Super exciting racing, down to the last couple of rounds as always. And of course, Moose Barrows with the Moose Barrows Trophy. All right, let's start off with our new Olympian, Simone Breitfuss Camelander, who fought through the pain in the number four spot. Simone, how's it back, buddy? <laughs> it's hard to stay, it's, yeah, time for a break. He'll be ready for Taos, and one of this new guys gonna show up down at Taos. Wilhelm Norbitsev, big fight Norwegian, you coming to Taos? Yes, sir. But these two have been battling it out for years now. Robert Cohn in the third place spot today. Robert, hard fought battle out there with Michael. Great hill here at Allison. I uh, love battling Michael, love battling these guys, and uh, it's good skiing. All righty. Back to back wins for Michael Ankeny, the Joker, riding the pony into the finish corral. Unbelievable weekend, buddy. Couldn't have asked for a better weekend. Hill was great, crowd was great, weather was great. It's just good to be back here with Buds and. Uh, I look forward to a long-standing rivalry with Rob, Simone, new guy, and uh, and uh, yeah, don't forget to ride the pony. <laughs> so let's bring Moose out with the trophy now, and the check. Moose, what do you think? It's a typical house and hill, it's wonderful. Great skier and great winning. Might fill that with the Tito's later. And the check for Michael Ankeny. Michael gets his DNA vibe too, so the only guy in the podium without one. Thank you to our team, to the racers, to all the sponsors, Perry from DNA Vibe, and uh, all the best. Looking forward to seeing everyone in Taos. All right, out comes the champagne. Champagne flying to Corbell. I'm on cloud nine, man. Uh, I'm definitely not low. I'm definitely not low. Hard to say because I haven't been in this position in a while, so I'm just I'm just excited to be able to perform on race day. 7th of April, we'll be down in Taos. 